It's nice in Grover in it, eh? As I, yes. why should people visit Grover in it? There's a big church here. Big church? Yes. Grote kerk, eh? Grote kerk. As I. He says there's a museum we should come and visit. Yeah. And other bits as well, as I. As I. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Welcome to Graaf Renet guys, one of the oldest towns in South Africa. Check out the church, the Dutch Reformed Church, here in Graaf Renet. Also known as Grote Kerk, Grote Kerk, big church. And apparently this building was influenced by the architecture of Salisbury Cathedral in England. I've not been to Salisbury Cathedral just yet. But let me know if you see any similarities in it. It's got a beautiful, beautiful design. Beautiful flowers. I think the church is open, so I think we should go inside. But just to give you an idea of the exterior. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can go in. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, there is another one, yes, thank you. Oh, very thank you, that's very good. And here is alright with the video, and I can take a video here. This is the original color. Yeah. So the original paint. And over there as well on the top, the body is a similar color. And there's more of a history at the back there as well. And let's gonna see if we can see some interesting facts. Often in South Africa, the history of towns are well documented by the church and churches in general. They were often the only ones to keep records of places. Building costs 18,000 pounds and it was built between 1885 and 1887. The history there as well of the church in the early years. That's interesting with the advent of electricity, the 12 imposing chandeliers were removed and lost. The only remaining relic of this lost era are to be found mounted on the walls of the transepts with paraffin lamps. So some of the oil lamps yeah. once or twice a year they get put on, yeah. And then the air vents at the bottom. In the air vents you should, okay. Okay. Interessant. Okay, we can okay. Oh, there you go, Salisbury Cathedral. There we go. There it says that this church, the Groot Kerk, was built in this new Gothic style with the cathedral in England in mind. Wow, this is special. A Dutch Bible that with the emblem of the Dutch East India Company on there as well. It was printed in 1786. And there are the queens, mounted as well there. King and a queen over there, and another king and queen. Well, they look very similar to those ones. But what an, what an impressive exterior and interior. Groot Kerk, Grote Kerk. In Graaf Renet. Just look how beautiful that is, the backdrop, and yeah, I have to say, what an absolutely beautiful town Graaf Renet is. I've never been here, I've always had friends who came from here, friends who studied with me at university, who also told me I should visit one day, and uh, finally made it here. And obviously there is the church we just went to, and let's check out this square here with a monument. Yeah. This 
looks very impressive. Also, hallo, Jelle. Ach, sei, wie sie, wie die, wie die Monument hier ist. Which monument? Geen idee. Now let's check out. Graaf Renet Commando. Looks like a war monument here. With the angel, presumably. Angel of peace. Angel of peace, yes. How's it? Thank you, Jelle. Lekker dag, Jelle, hoor. So Graaf Renet has more national monuments than any other town in South Africa. And there's one of them. Guys, and Christmas time is such a big time in South Africa as well. Here you can see some of the lights that will be turned on during Christmas. And they never take them off in South Africa. I don't know what the deal is in other countries. I think in other countries sometimes they put them up temporarily during Christmas. But in South Africa, they are there for the remainder of the year. They get switched off, but they don't get taken off. Here you've got Merino Pharmacy. And now is probably a good chance to tell you about the economy. Here in Graaf Renet, yeah, so clearly some transport businesses around, but this is very much sheep farming country, which is why you've got the reference to Merino Pharmacy. But also mohair. The mohair industry is quite prominent here as well, and I speak under correction, but I think ostrich farming as well in this part of the world. And over there you can see the church again. Now the kerk is mooi So I've just been told that this is the, the main street here, church street. If you enter Graaf Renet, this is the main street and the longest street in Graaf Renet. It's called Church Street. Thank you man. Guys, this is typical of South African towns in general to have lots of churches. Obviously, we saw the Dutch Reformed Church earlier, the Grote Kerk. But there are several others as well scattered across towns. And Graaf Renet's no exception. I think I've stumbled across a interesting street here, Bork Street. And there looks to be some interesting shops and architecture here. So let's check it out. Yes. So these signs, so this is some classic South African products. Also from the past. So Omo, a washing powder, sunlight sip, also used for cleaning and five roses tea. Is that the original packaging of sunlight sip? You can see there still with the, the pound signs. Surely that's not a thousand pounds. Wow, and some interesting bags here as well. With classic South African products, royal baking powder. And it's called Oma's Country Store. So, Grandma's Country Store. Let's check it out. Yeah, South African brands. John Deere tractors, different kinds of motor oil. Yeah, check out these mugs. Amazing. Knickknacks and Heinz. Durkey with condensed milk. Beaches with chewing gum. And this is probably my favorite grandpa for the headaches. And you probably don't get more South African than this. These toy cars made from wires. Wow, I've not seen the sherbet since I was a kid. Maybe I should try it. And Pop Rocks cracking candy. I'll have one of these as well. Right guys, here you can see I bought this blue tongue sherbet and the Pop Rocks cracking candy for 37 rand the blue tongue was actually only two rand so you can see still popping after 40 years so what you do so what you do is you take some of the candy in your hand and then you pop it in your mouth and it makes a popping sound whilst you uh, whilst you eat it gosh it's very sweet it's so sweet it's very much not something I'll have every day, but absolutely reminds me of my childhood. It's a little bit, it's a little bit sweeter than I remember it. Pop rocks. Hello. And the blue tongue sherbet. It's 
only two rand. Huge bargain. Hello, guys. <laughs> Living the dream, eh? Saying hi to locals while eating some blue tongue sherbet. So here goes. I really needed a spoon for this. Let's see. So there's the sherbet. And again, you need to. Oh, oh, wow. That's exactly what I remember as a kid. If you put too much in your mouth, you, uh, you might be overwhelmed by the taste, but yeah, it's not very sweet. It's actually got a little bit of a bitter taste. The blue tongue. But uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's go for round two. Over there, as you can see. It's gonna stain my hand blue as well, but. Yeah, it's a very sharp sensation when you taste it first. And then with the aftertaste, you actually, you can enjoy it. So it's a bit of a weird, weird one to, to try. There you can see the ingredients. Sugar, dextrose, and some other stuff. That's not very good for you. I'll take a little bit here and I'll just put it in. Yeah, that's probably the better way to eat it. Little by little. Only take a only take a small amount at once. But uh, yeah, a bit of a memory back to my childhood guys. And all these other products here as well. Some of them, I think obviously fries you'll be familiar with in England and other places as well. Five roses perhaps as well. Right guys, that was interesting. A bit of a flashback to my childhood and uh, learning how to eat sherbet again or how to consume it. So if you've got a particular way that you consume your sherbet, let me know in the comments. Yeah, this looks to be a beautiful residential street. Here in Graaf Renet. And yeah, just amazing how much more quiet it is than the town centre, which is, I think, just on the other side here. And you can see this is Parliament Street. Coming down, also beautiful cottages and architecture. And beautiful trees as well in this residential street. I say residential, there's a couple of businesses around as well, but definitely have a very, very relaxed vibe here. Gosh, yeah, just look at this house here or cottage and yeah over here as well manor walk street manor and beautiful flowers here as well next to a beautiful house and I wonder what this is what this was Not sure, maybe uh, an old telephone booth or something? I'm not sure at all. Yeah, some people hard at work as well, but I just wanted to show you the different colors here on the window blinds. Over there. And gosh, yeah. I'm a first time visitor to Graaf Renet, but I can already say I feel at home. Yeah, in this street. And now might actually be a good chance to tell you more about the history of Graaf Renet. So it's one of the oldest towns in South Africa and it was established by the Dutch East India Company in 1786. They established it as a trading post and 
you will probably get the vibe yeah that it is quite old in a south african context at least so i've read it's the sixth oldest town in south africa but i've also read it's the fourth oldest town in south africa so different sources i mean regardless it is still a very old town in the south african context and the name graaf renet comes from cornelis jacob van de graaf who was a governor of a cape colony at the time and his wife renet so graaf renet Just take a walk here in Parliament Street, Parliamentstraat and show you more of the beautiful cottages here. And on this side as well, Kam de Boer cottages, so the Kam de Boer National Park, which I visited as well. And yeah, gosh, they are very beautiful. More cottages and hotels. So clearly tourism a very big industry, more people hard at work. And I'm just going to check out some of the interesting architecture over there as well. And whilst we're walking there, maybe, hello sir, how are you guys? What are you doing? You are fixing something? Very nice, can I check? Thank you, sir. Very nice. Yeah. Faulty. Yeah, faulty. Yeah, what, what cable is it? Electricity? Or? Okay. Yeah. This guy's come from far. You come from far to, to fix it? Yes, from Utenik. From Utenik? Yeah. Wow, so it was be, uh, must be a big drive, huh? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I'll just uh, say thank you for these guys for showing me here. Uh, yeah. Very nice, yeah. Excellent. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. People there just showed me that they, uh, they're fixing a faulty cable and I guess that's where the municipal taxes go towards as well and maybe that's a nice segue to another story I'm going to tell you here about a republic that was established here so Graaf Renet was once the site for a short-lived republic in 1795 and what happened was a lot of the free burghers of the town, they got annoyed with the amount of company taxation they had to pay. So they rebelled and they established their own republic. But my understanding is that it was very short lived and I'm not entirely sure what happened to it. All I know is that the Dutch authorities, they couldn't take action at the time because the uh, British came and took over the Cape shortly after but let me know if you've got any idea about what happened to that republic the republic was called the colony of Graaf Renet and looking at it today I'm just asking myself a question could Graaf Renet be an independent country probably not right so it's interesting that this building the Polish way I think that's the uh, building and alterations company so I don't know if there are Polish builders here in South Africa that's uh, that's a long way to come and do some restoration but yeah there you can see the flag of the Netherlands and the flag of South Africa and at the back there is some Dutch colonial architecture which I think we'll should go and check out yeah gosh check out the church there the Dutch Reformed Church in its full glory. So there's Drosdeje Hotel by the looks of it. And here's a sign towards Reinet House or Reinet Huis. So the wife of Cornelis Jacob van der Graaf. And the Polish way. The builders there. Dag Seele. Hello, hello. Yeah, I've arrived here at a theatre. So the John Rupert Theatre and there's some information here. So there we go. This building was erected in the early 19th century. It was a mission church and then in 1920 the society sold it to the United Congregational Church and the connection to Dr. Anton Rupert. He was a very famous businessman here in South Africa. He bought this building 
and restored it. The John Rupert Theatre. And here we're crossing to the library. That's it. I think this is the library building. And more beautiful architecture there. And check this out. A Dutch colonial building. So, when I was in the Dutch Caribbean, I mentioned to you that all the Dutch colonial buildings, or most of the Dutch colonial buildings in South Africa, are white. And that's a good example of it. So, they are not as colorful as the ones in Aruba, Curaçao, or Bonaire, that's for sure. But the white color still looks quite beautiful in its own way. I actually cannot imagine the Dutch colonial buildings in South Africa not to be white. It's strange, as much as I love colour, I just think it would look out of place. And there you go, there's another shot of it. And over here as well. Gosh, I could stroll around here for hours as well, taking pictures. And another beautiful building here as well. Just look at the detail here in the wood. And over there as well. Graaf Renette has definitely maintained its connections to the Dutch. And it feels a little bit like Stellenbosch. And even though it's not as old as Stellenbosch, I definitely get a bit of a Stellenbosch vibe here. Graaf Renet was also the starting point of the great trek groups led by Gerrit Maritz. Of course, there were other groups that took different routes during the great trek. Hello, guys. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, some more friendly locals, but uh, anyway, I was saying about the Great Trek, so Gerrit Maritz started from here. And of course, the Great Trek was the northward migration of Dutch speaking settlers in the 19th century. They migrated from the Cape Colony to escape British rule. They traveled by wagon and that was in the 19th century. So Gauteng moved back to the Cape. Quite ironic given the Great Trek. Here is Reinet Huis. So unfortunately I can't take video inside, so I'm not going to go in, but Reinet House, 1812, see formation there. It's an example of an H-plan Cape Dutch house. And it was a Dutch reformed church, parsonage until 1904. And at least we got a very nice view from here. Graaf Reinet. The hourglass on the front gable reminds us that time flies and there is the hourglass there that reminds us that time flies which I think is a very nice reminder and I think Parsonage Street is my favorite one so far here in Graaf Renet so a bit of Stellenbosch but with a Karua backdrop I hope I haven't insulted any locals by making that comparison. But it really does feel like Stellenbosch, definitely in this part of town. That's it. And whilst we walk back in this direction to another part of town, I think it's worth mentioning as well that Graaf Renet was a major center for the British during the Anglo-Boer War or South African War here in the Eastern Cape. And I'm hoping that we'll see some monuments or more information about that. So, what do you think of the sixth oldest town in South Africa? Let me know in the comments. I have not been here before. This is my first time in Graaf Renet. And I can honestly say and I do like it. I like the town. I love... <laughs> Hello guys. I love the friendly locals. And... 
I also love the location, Groot Karoo. I'm becoming more and more of a fan. And I'm just here in another residential part of town and look at the beautiful flowers here. So arid climate or not, they take good care of their gardens. This is very, very impressive. And just a reminder of how dry it can be here. Beautiful, beautiful houses. Beautiful streets. More beautiful houses and gardens. This takes a lot of effort in this weather, in this climate. Here's some beautiful shops here as well with a bit of color. A thrift shop. By the looks of it. See if I can go in here. Yeah? What do they sell? Antiques, boobs, home oh, kitchenware. Hi, that's it. Can I go to Biki Cake? Thank you. Wow, check this out. Guinness Jelly. A complex condiment with rich notes of Guinness Stout. Wow. Perfect complement to stronger cheeses. So, definitely some interesting stuff for sale here. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of knitting and wool stuff over here. Buttons, simply karoo gloves. I think that might be Lever Hexi. A classic Afrikaans children's book character. The lovely witch. Right, and yeah, some more trinkets and ornaments for sale here. Some books, well. Africa, government and politics. That could be very interesting. Spiliki, so game. That's the Afrikaans for game. And just various other bits and bobs. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool thrift shop or charity shop perhaps. I handcrafted leather goods for sale here. Check if I can go. Dag sê. Dag sê meneer, kijk ons een bykie. Kijk hier so. Terug, dankie. This is very impressive. Oh, handcrafted. Look at all these bags. And the workstation. table as well and I even saw a guitar over there bye donkey okay. no, I say thank you sir thank you right windmill junction there's a beautiful pink dress outside and some aprons and some boots wow lots of purple and pink here yeah. Beautiful bags as well there, and bags, lots of boots. And here's some traditional South African shoes, the Fellies. Yep, indeed, Felly sneaker. Check this out, for sunny days and hungover afternoons. You can come and get your sunglasses here. Wow, certainly a lot of color here in this Karua town. So yeah, an eclectic mix of architecture, some Pretty cool shops, friendly people. Really, what's not to like? Oh, and did I mention the beautiful backdrop of a Karua? Graaf Renette. I think I really like you. Right, guys, and I've arrived here at Duncan Street in Graaf Renette. And I want to tell you an interesting story about Duncan. So he was the governor of a Cape Colony from 1820 to 1821 but before he was stationed here in South Africa he was in India and his wife passed away before he got to South Africa and he was very very sad about that when his wife died his wife's name was Elizabeth he had a heart embalmed and he carried it with him wherever he went apparently and I know that it got buried with him and because he was so sad that she passed away he also named Port Elizabeth 
which was the former name of Geberke after his wife that passed away. So that's a little bit about Donken. And here on Donken Street, you've got a monument here in memory of the Anglo-Boer War or the South African War as it's known by some. And of course, another residential part here in Graaf Renet with the wide residential streets and the beautiful backdrop over there as well. Oppie Dorpie Café, wow. That's an interesting name here in Kalidon Street. Yeah, here in Kalidon Street. And more of the shops here. Hello guys, how are you? Hi guys. lekker, graaf Renet. Daar zei, thanks man. Dank u jullie. Daar zei, daar zei. Daar zei. Some locals here. Who's not camera shy? And some merchandise, things for sale here. Graaf Renet is a great place. Kijk jullie graag, kijk jullie YouTube. Ja, so, you can go and look on YouTube. Uh, YouTube? Ah, so. What is your name? My name is Patrick Blairs. Patrick? My name is Ricardo, sir. Ricardo, yes. Nice to meet you guys here from nice Graaf Renet. Thank you, ah, so. Thank you, you know. Some more stuff for sale. Caps and cigarettes, sunglasses. Hello, sir. Ah, so. Hello, sir. I say more of the shops here, high street shops here in South Africa with the brands you get. And there's the classic Arua scene at the back. Eclectic mix of shops. I say hello. Thanks, buddy. I thank you, man. Okay, you must like a day. Who is it in Graaf Renet om hier te woon? Say maar for me. Ik ga het me aan en zo, jullie doen een mooie job man. Ga zij, dankie. Lekker dag hoor, bye bye. We're just on the other side here. Of Kalidon Street. And, uh, hello sir, hello, hello guys, how's it? Hi, thank you. Thank you, thank you, good. Ga zij. Hello guys, how's it? How are you? Hi, that's Fortune tellers. Over here. Interesting part of town. Dag say, hello, hello. Dag say. Yeah. That's it. Hello, guys. How's it? How are you? Very good, very good. People playing cards. And barbecuing on the street. You can see a traditional chemist. Yeah. Hello, sir. How are you? Koop jy leverkie? Wees jy, wat soek jy? Wat soek ek? Ja. Ek is een toerist meneer, maar lyk my, jy is nie baie vriendelijk met my nie ne? Dat is nie vriendelijk, ja. Ja, sy. Ja, oké. Kom, kom.